All right, everybody. How you doing? I'm Taylor. This is the Cranky Comic Book Review Show. Welcome to my channel. Doing this all out of order. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this witty, insightful, brilliant, always cheerful commentary on comics. It's going to be none of those things today. Uh, it's not going to be insightful. It's not going to be witty. It's not going to be brilliant. Because none of these fucking comics were. They were kind of all garbage. Not really. It just wasn't a very good week for comics. Worst to best. We're going to get into it. Um, personal preference, as always. Your mileage may vary. If it does, start your own channel. Or leave a comment down below. That's even better. Leave a comment down below. Start a dialogue. Tell me that my reviews suck and you hate me, and we can go on from there. Uh, I hated this book. Electro number 100. Oh, man, I hated this. Uh, Anna said he's writing it. Very verbose in this. It's not an Electro story. It's a Typhoid Mary story. Seems like a very awkward way to tell a Typhoid Mary story, too, with, like, different personalities and, and the DID and dissociative identity disorder. It doesn't seem like a very convincing way to do it. There's weird talking heads. The proportions, they make Kingpin even look weirdly even more gigantic than he is. I mean, look at the hands on that Kingpin versus... And then the facial expressions. The, I, the art by... Uh, what the, who the hell is the artist? Who the hell is the artist? Sid Koshian. I liked some of the art, but some of it just really drove me bananas. Like, the facial expressions especially when there's uh, dialogue going on, just did not line up with the word balloons very well. Uh, and then the story, there's not much of a story. I mean, there's really not much of a story here. And you're, we're paying, how much is this? This is a premium, $5. Okay, so not Marvel, Marvel's new norm, uh, $5. You get covers. There's not, I don't think there's a hundred covers. I didn't count. I don't, she's not been around for a hundred issues of her own stuff. So <sighs> well, maybe, but, and then there's back, weird backup stories that do nothing. And weird little jokey bits that do nothing. It, it There's no reason for this damn book to exist. You don't learn anything about any of the characters. You don't learn a damn thing about Typhoid Mary. You especially don't learn about Elektra. Uh, the artist representation of Elektra doesn't really fit anything else. It's a new sort of uniform, but it's not a very good one. And I just... it Yeah, this just drove me nuts. Uh, no. All right. Speaking of books that don't need to exist, and I don't quite get it. I love Ron V. Dormley. I do. But I think I'm done with Venom. I just can't bring myself to care. I kept trying. I don't like Brian Hitch's art on the cover, on the title. It's too clean and too heavily inked, really, and too just kind of, I don't know, it seems weirdly static, even though this is like a big flash page. A splash page. Flash, splashy, flashy, whatever the hell he page. I just don't care for it, and I don't give a shit about the story. I tried. I tried. I get This is eight issues, seven issues in. They, they have this weird split going with, like, Dylan Brock and Eddie Brock, and neither one of them is very interesting. Eddie's trapped in, like, some time loop. That's not this. This is all Dylan trying to be the young hero, kind of, but, you know, it's a big fight with Dylan and whoever the hell, Siphon, or whatever, that Pestilence, or, I don't know, one of the damn new symbiotes. I can't even think of the name. It's a Reaper or Reaver, or, I don't know, the red guy that's not Carnage, but looks just like kind of Carnage. And then there's a spoiler at the end that it may be something else, I don't know, or it's just bad drawing. I can't tell. I don't care. I am done. It just bored me and lost interest. I am sorry. I will give Rom V a shot on Detective Comics, and I'll keep reading the Swamp Thing and stuff, but Venom, no thanks. I'm done. I just, I'm done. All right. This is going to be a quick review, people, honestly, because like, this is just, like I said, not a very great week for comics, at least in my humble opinion. Rewrite Titans number three. This is like Pacific Rim, right? You know, you got all the big smashy mechs. It's a big, stump, stupid, fun action movie with big, smashy mech battles versus things. And this is like each town has their own mech, and then they sort of fight. But when they fight here, you can't tell what the hell's going on because it's really confusing panel layouts that don't really emphasize any of it and takes away all the coolness. Oh, and that's the first two pages, and the rest of it is just eating waffles. And while I do love waffles, I do not care about this family drama. Like, it should be... <sighs> the main gist is like the main mech pilot didn't want to be the mech pilot is now forced to be the mech pilot. It's kind of the stereotypical uh, comic trope or movie trope or TV trope where like the replacement has to step in and step up. That's not can't not necessarily a bad thing, but this is just such a goddamn boring story. It really is dull. I mean, there's just nothing to it. Like uh, there's the, the real reason the the mech pilot didn't want to be the mech pilot is because her dad says he wasn't good enough. Okay, that's fine. That's that's it. That near as I can tell, that's the drama. Uh, and now, like she has to, so she has to get over the fact that her dad didn't think she was gonna be it. Now she has to be it. It takes everything that could be cool about mechs fighting and defending cities and, and kaiju and everything else. It just makes it into incredibly dull reading. 
it, it is just god awfully unbearing. And I am done. We ride Titans number three. Uh, now, Terra number nine. It's all right. I mean, I mean, we're we're in the all right section here, but it's not great. This is like a Buffalo, Buffalo Bill centric or whatever his name is, Blind Eye Bill or Black Suit Bill or I don't know whatever the hell the guy's name is. The bad guy, the 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 bad guy that is now curse your son, but inevitable. You're not the real bad guy, but you probably kind of are still. That's this issue. It's okay. Um, it just doesn't seem up to the snuff of the rest of them. Like like you learn a few things maybe. Uh, unless they're lies and you go through it and all there unless it's a lie and then you know there's a big sudden revelation at the end unless it's a lie uh it just with this book yeah, i kind of really did just want action romp and lights out in georgia and everyone's fighting giant dark monsters and you had that for a bit and there's still some of it there's a little bit of it in here here it's just not one of the stronger issues of the book by any means um the art just feels rushed uh the characters like Either like they they shifted focus on these like some of the characters in this issue in a weird way instead of focusing on the main character, um, and like it's just kind of confusing and like it, I don't know. yeah there's a there's a bit of a like what the hell like why did I step into this I don't remember what happened in the last issue am I going to go back and read it and find out no no I am not I am counting on each issue of these books to like kind of give me enough to read and to recall and I there's this I don't know. it's yeah I mean it's all right it's just not very not the best issue. Um, like, the art just didn't seem as dynamic as it used to from, uh, what's his nuts? Don't turn the know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the writing inside. Yeah. Again, we're getting somewhere and, like, we're getting to the, like, this is the, the second arc where, you know, you learn that the big bad guy's not the big bad guy. Very, very kind of tropey. It's, it's all right. Um, then we have the end issue of Last Flight Out. It's okay. Um, there's a couple moments here that actually did tug on the heartstrings. It's about parenting, really, and fatherhood and, and, and motherhood and what it's like to be a father and a mother and, like, not be very good at it. And that's, like, you know, interesting enough, calm. And then that's wrapped around the end of the world where, like, you have to get off the planet in a certain amount of time thing. It had some weak issues in the middle. I was, really did want to see how it wrapped up. And, like, once you get going on this, like, the, the twist at this is, like, you can see the twist a mile away. It's just kind of, like, they telegraph that punch. And, uh... It, it's still not awful. There still are a couple emotional like beats that do hit in this, but then it has a weird ending where the very last page feels like it's drawn by somebody else, and I think and like like or add tacked on later, and and it just doesn't necessarily seem to fit, uh, and it seems like they're trying to set it up for something else that really shouldn't have been here. This should have been a one and done story, um, and like just kind of it, and I think it might be. I hope. I'm done with it regardless. I, there's not enough interest in, in it for me to keep going. I thought the first two issues of this were great, and then I thought it really hit a lull, and I thought this kind of redeemed it a bit, but it's still... It, it, it's, it's it's fine plus. I mean, it's like six and a half, maybe. It's not fantastic. Um, it, it, you just don't lose... Like, you, like, the art seemed to, like, get worse and worse as a, at every issue, and this is probably the worst art of the bunch, too. I don't know if there's a different artist here. I'm not doing research, people. I'm just reading... Um, and, and like you kind of lost some of the dynamic scale of the first one and some of the grandeur that they had on the landscapes. And then you get just kind of, you know, not really fleshed out drawings, not really fleshed out anything and just kind of generic looking figures and generic looking everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they're, like I said, there are, there are a few moments in here where it's like he, it, it touches on things and like the art, the writer gets across what he's trying to get across. It's like a little bit get by hitting, hit with a sledgehammer with the point. I mean, the point gets hammered home in dialogue and exposition pretty heavily, but it's all right. Um, yeah, we're going to do it this way. Nightmare Country. This is Sandman universe. This is the Corinthian. If you've never read Sandman, well, mild spoilers, he's a nightmare that has uh, mouth for eyes and he eats eyeballs. It's okay. This is kind of an abstract story. I might reread this down the line. Uh, I like the art by uh, Lissandro Estorhan quite a bit. The, the the painted art that that sort of bookends this. The the Yannis, Yannick Paquette art in the middle. It's it's serviceable. I don't think it's fantastic. Um, the story itself. It, it it's it's Tynan. Uh He's hit or miss, and this is not necessarily a hit for me. It like you you what he's doing is like he's like using the Corinthian as a storytelling device and wrapping it all up. And there's other nightmares introduced, and it is nightmare country. So there's a few different nightmares going on, and there's a few different like plots going on, and it doesn't really get wrapped up well. It's a one shot, and it's sort of like a half shot. Like I felt that like it needed to like come together a bit more cohesively and a bit more. Uh, 
yeah, just wrap it up a bit and like have a point. Uh, I mean, there's a, there probably is a point here. It's just kind of not that great. The thing I loved about the original Sandman and Neil Gaiman, I know it's hard to do, and I know it's like every writer has to put their own stamp on the things. And, and if you're playing in a universe like DC where like Neil Gaiman is not always going to be the one writing it, you have to give other writers a chance. But Gaiman's, even the, the single issues of Gaiman, they were always kind of like a fable or a parable or they had a point and it was like a really well constructed story. This is a very loose, messy tale that doesn't get tied up. And not, and not, not that Gaiman always even tied things up in the perfect package but you always understood what like, what the relevance was and like sometimes it was maybe a little too much with gaming but like you you kind of borderline on like uh his love of like folklore and his love of fairy tales and his love of uh just you know re like the, the nature of storytelling uh and and maybe it was a little bit too heavy into that but like it I, this is too heavy in the other direction where it's just kind of like a sloppy loose mess of stuff that that is kind of dreamlike because it's a dream. Get it? Aww. Like it's not supposed to make sense because we're in nightmare country. That's yeah, all right. All right. Um. Next we have Flashpoint Beyond Zero. Right. So there's gonna be more. Probably. This is all right. It's Jeff Johns. I've not read the original Flashpoint because I just don't care. I just don't. I I I know I'm supposed to. And like I know love a lot of people love the Flashpoint stuff and like the like the DC animated movie and like the story and like that Flash broke the universe. I Flash as a character just kind of bores me, and so I've not gotten into it. I like alternate reality stuff, and that's kind of that's what this is like wrapped around the idea of a Flash thing. And you get Tom, uh, is it Thomas King? Thomas Wayne? Thomas Wayne? Yeah, Bruce Wayne's dad. You know the the bitter old dad uh, that was in the last Justice League incarnate for a bit. This is the story of what happens after that. I don't want to spoil it. I like the art in this. Uh, like actually, I did. Uh, it was by who is it by? I should probably look at these up first, people. It make for better content. But instead, I'm just gonna ramble my way through this stuff and see if I can figure it out. I cannot figure it out because they put it. Oh, hang on. There we go. Eduardo Risso. I like Eduardo Risso's art. And Jeff Johns does a decent job of setting up the next thing. But it is just setting up the next big thing, and it is just kind of. It's not a retread. It just sort of feels like. Uh, oh, nope, we're just undoing everything we did in that, that Flashpoint. And, like, now we're just going to have a new way of having a crisis. Crisis, 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 a Flashpoint. Whatever. Flashpoint. Crisis. Deceased. DC just loves to do this shit. And, like, maybe. Here's a, here's a wacky idea. Maybe they could just have something set in continuity that's, like, a standard story that's not multiverse shattering and just make it kind of interesting. They don't do any of that shit. Like, this is just... This, I mean, this issue itself, actually, I, I take that back. This issue itself actually does some of that, and I kind of don't mind the portrayal of Thomas King in here. And I get, or Thomas Wayne, sorry, not Thomas King. He's saying Tom King because he's that fucker that fucked up Batman. Well, one of the one of them. Uh, but this sets it up, and like, there's an end where the character, I don't know. And I think you're supposed to know who he is and be like, oh, my God, that reveal is fantastic. But if you'd have never been following up with all the minutia and all the events and all the everything else, you're going to be lost on this. And it's... Eh. I don't, I'm sick of being lost in every damn story from DC. Like I don't, I'm not gonna go back and read twenty some years of crap just to get caught up with all their event stuff. They need, they, they just need to do a better job of like summarizing it, making it better, and just stop doing the like multiverse or multi, the Mars multiversal crap. They just need a break with all that kind of stuff. All right, last and the best book of the week, which still has some flaws. It's Breakout Number One by Dark Horse Comics. It's written by Zach Kaplan, art by Wilton Santos, uh, and yeah, it. This is a alternate universe where these giant boxes, cubes, come down and like abduct kids, and that, and then like the world has learned to kind of deal with it, move on, because they don't know what the hell's going on. And that premise alone doesn't seem super realistic, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Um, and but it's an inter interesting enough idea. And like the the we the reason this is the book of the week is because it is an interesting idea. Uh, and it's setting up a not necessarily super believable plot, but it's interesting enough I'll probably pick up the second issue of it. What I don't like is that I goddamn hate some of the page layouts in here. They are a jumbled mess. And like th there's no clear direction as to which way to read these. Um, and th that's just one example. Uh, there are some where it is clear, but like this is not read how you would think it would be read. It doesn't make sense if you read it the way standard comics are, are done. And like there's, there are other pages like that. Like the layout needs work. But I like the actual art when it's not doing that nonsense. I mean, here's another example of like just, just tell a story and grid it out and make it gridded and go 
in a standard page layout. You don't need to do this stuff. You're not adding anything to it. And I know it's a, I know I bitch about that a lot, but it continues to be a problem with comics. Like a lot of artists these days just have struggle with the basics of comic book storytelling. And there's some of that in here, but there, the art can be dynamic. It can be pretty fantastic when, when it's on. And like, I like the characterization. I like the facial expressions. I like the smaller moments in here when when he's when they're not just trying to get too cute with like the, the layout and the panels and stuff and the idea of like the world having to like learn to cope with the new norm i mean there's there's parallels to covid and there's parallels to all that stuff except for unlike covid it's just, it seems like the entire world is in agreement over something which that's so that's the biggest fiction in this book not the giant cubes invading things or taking over the world it's just that the world agrees and everyone's kind of like that except for the one kid who lost his brother and he's the one that's going to save the world minor spoilers but it, does, it, it just sort of seems like the status quo is not super realistic in, the, in that nature of it. Uh, but the idea that the, like, there's these giant mysterious floating cubes in space and nobody knows how the hell they got there and like nobody knows what they're doing and like they've abducted enough kids now that people are like learning to live with it and it's part of like school drills and there's like, some cool school shooting parallels and stuff here where like instead of actually doing something about it, you just learn to tell the kids to hide under the fucking desk. There's a lot of that. Um, it, and like there's some undertones here that like, I think the, art, the writer is telling a bit of, you know, wearing a bit of their politics on the sleeve. I'm not arguing with the politics. I'm just saying that's where it is. And uh, it, it does did hold my interest enough to, like, get me curious to read what is happening next. Like I said, I did not think this week was a very good week for comics. I, I think it was a slim stack. Um, if I had it to do over again, maybe these three books I would have bought. Maybe. Maybe. And that's a big Maybe. Breakout's probably the only real one I would have picked up. Flashpoint, you just read it digitally because it's just adding another nonsensey mess to it. And then the rest of these, nah. Like, I, 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 I'm kind of annoyed with this week of comics. It's like you spend 60 bucks on shit, and it mostly is shit. Uh, it's frustrating. So, there you go. I'm actually cranky this week. There, uh, people are saying I was too cheerful and happy. I just, I like it when, I, when books are good. I hate it. When books are mediocre and I really truly hate it when they're bad and like th there's fixes that can be done to make them less bad the mediocre actually pisses me off more because like that's just the churn of the monthly comic grind and, and just, just tell a good story I, I just want I just want books to be good I just want them to be like these like the, the reason I fell in love with comics is like they're escapist and they're fun and they're a collaborative effort in most ways and they can be fantastic when they're when they're done right but when they're not it is so goddamn irritating all right that's all i got i'm not gonna edit this i whatever <laughs> this is just me rambling it's what i do every week this week's rambling is just a little more angry than normal so i'm out of here don't be a dick even if the comics all suck <laughs> see ya